What's going on, world? It's your boy Gemini Brown here, back with another episode of Nalo Kicking Knowledge. Today, it's a special edition episode. This episode will be featured on the channel of your fabulous astrologer, Nadia Shaw. So I want to thank Nadia for the opportunity to come on her platform and do my thing. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Gemini Brown. I've been an astrologer for four or five years now. And just like most of you, my interest in astrology started with reading a book. And from there, I did the work to unlock this knowledge within myself. Um, one thing about astrology that I really enjoy is hearing the different perspectives. Uh, it teaches you to know thyself and therefore helping you expand on your own individuality. And through interacting with others, I see that we all have a unique perspective. So if you're someone who follows the stars on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis, you're an astrologer, and you shouldn't hesitate to share your perspective. Uh, I believe it's needed, and we're all contributors to this growing science, all right? Um, I'm a Gemini sun. I'm a Virgo moon. I'm a Virgo rising. So just like my sun sign, Gemini, which uh, corresponds to versatility, communication, uh, I enjoy those things. And in addition to astrology, I'm also in educator, a poet, and a musician. So feel free to check out my channel. I post all my creative works there. And for those of you who do know me, let's get into it. I've decided to talk a little bit more about synastry and some things that you need to know. And I chose to talk about this because on a week-to-week -week basis, I get a lot of emails about people who they've gotten into astrology and they discover compatibility. And it's one thing that I definitely know is that uh, although it helps you know thyself, and, and within knowing thyself, we get to know others. Uh, many people um, enjoy observing this knowledge within others and how their energy uh, plays out, okay? Uh, so the first thing I will tell you is that to get good at understanding synastry, it is best to know how to read your own chart, okay? And it's very much so, reading synastry charts is very much so like reading your own charts, except that you're taking two charts uh, into mind, okay? So keep this in mind. Synastry is the interaction of one person's personal energy versus another person's personal energy. So always think, how is this person's energy or what type of influence is this person's energy adding into my life? Or what kind of effect is my energy having upon this person? Okay? So we use terms like this person's uh, moon is falling into my first house. Their Venus is in my 10th. Their sun is squaring my Mars. Things of that nature, just like we use in an in individual chart, okay? So let's start with house placements, right? What happens, what is, what happens when a person's planet falls into a house? Well, what, what's happening is that this person is bringing the influence of that particular planet to this area of life. So let's use the sun in the fifth house as an example, okay? Uh, the sun, of course, is our uniqueness, is our individuality. It's within ourselves what we do really well, okay, and what we're known for to some extent. And in the fifth house is the house of romance, creativity, uh, children, all of that, okay? So when a person, when, when someone's son falls into another's fifth house, what happens is the person whose house it is sees easily sees the the finer qualities of that sun person even if the sun person doesn't see it within themselves let's say we have a sun a, a person whose sun is natively within their 12th house and they may not even have much confidence about themselves or or an outward or healthy outward expression of ego, okay? Within their interaction with the person who their son falls into their fifth house, that person easily sees them 
as creative, as romantic, and there's a general admiration for them. So here's the first, here's one of the, the, the points of emphasis. Within interaction, the planet person holds a lot of influence within that area of life, okay? The, the person whose house it is really is the is the recipient of that energy all right so you feel how the the 12th house sun person feels how they feel natally because that is them within their own energy field but within when they interact with this person this person raises them up shows them admiration and appreciation let's say you you know you go on a date or something and you do like a uh, painting and sipping right the person whose house it is liable to see that sun person as like picasso they're gonna be like wow you're so creative okay and in turn what happens is this increases the ego of the sun person all right so that another way to look at it is that the person whose planet it is that planet has an area of expression, okay, an area of expression within that interaction with that person, okay? So it's important to know what the planets mean and know what the houses mean and then blend them together. Let's take, um, let's take Venus, for example. Uh, Venus, of course, is, is our capacity to, to give and receive love. It shows... Uh, how we go about initiating relationships with others and the dynamics of how we want our relationships to be, right? So let's say uh, Venus goes into someone's eighth house, okay? And the eighth house deals with shared resources, uh, sex, occult things, and overall intense experiences. So whether this is romantic or platonic, the interaction between these people, more specifically, the house person is going to take on a layer of intensity towards it okay the this can go either way but you know this can be one of those friendships where the the um one friend is very possessive or jealous or, or jealous when the when the friend interacts with others okay these are eighth house themes uh then, if we add a, a layer of, of sign to it, this shows how these 8th house things are initiated or expressed. So, let's say this 8th house is, with, is within Gemini or, or maybe even Sagittarius because both have to do with learning, right? Uh, say it's in Gemini. Um, the person whose Venus is, the, the Venus person can... Be, and that person, that Venus person, follows astrology and things of that nature. That Venus person can feel because they are in the eighth house of this person. Oh, I can share my knowledge of astrology or my occult knowledge with you because there, there's a res, uh, a receptiveness there. Okay, and that's the presence of the Venus falling into the eighth house. So you can have a relationship where you know the venus person feels like they can do that they can they may talk about you know other taboo things they may talk about a lot a lot of sex you know what i'm saying um then let's say opposite to that that on the other foot that person's the uh, uh venus falls in to the other second then that person will be feeling like wow um this person has a lot of possessions or you know this is a friendship where they give they give to me on a materialistic basis, okay? So, or, or you know, they benefit from gaining a, a value of maybe traveling if that opposite house is like in Sagittarius, okay? So, Venus relationships, this is what, wherever my Venus falls in someone's house is going to show a large portion of how our relationship together is oriented. Right. And then, like I said, if this is romantic, it's going to be a really intense one where sex, you know, and intimacy is a is a driving force of the relationship. OK, so it's about knowing 
these planets, knowing what they mean. Then, just like in the regular chart, we have aspects, right? Then we're looking at not the aspect between the person's planet, but the aspect that their planet makes towards mine. And with aspects, there are harmonious aspects, and then there are uh, aspects of difficulty. And I never like to look at any as like, oh, this is, this is terrible. It's a bad aspect. But look at the more difficult ones as opportunities to grow. So let's say, um, let's say we have a, someone's Venus is squaring another person's Mars, right? There's a conflict of how the, the, the person exerts their energy that clashes with how the, the Venus person feels relationships with people should be. So that can result in, you know, arguing, not seeing uh, eye to eye, depending on the signs involved in the house placement. You know, it could be it could be power struggles. But at the same time, like I said, there's an uh, aspect of difficulty, right? It can be it can show attraction. It can show a love hate relationship. You know, ones where you know, and we're speaking in a romantic sense, you know, ones where you have, you know, it, it's a lot of passion, you know, but then that's followed by like arguments or that passion leads uh, to arguments and things like that. So then the, the real interesting one for me so far, my observations have been oppositions because oppositions really allow you to kind of get what you're, what you're missing, you know, or see things from the other perspective. Okay. So let's say, um, we have, uh, two people's Venus are, are in oppositions. And as we go into this, you know, there's, there's a layer. One thing people always want to uh, ask is, is this, is, should I pursue something with this person? And I always tell them, ultimately, that's up to you. What the synastry shows is the, the compatibility. Like, you know, is this going to be favorable? How is it going to feel? You know, that's how you should look about it. So if your Venus, say your two Venuses are opposing each other you're going to feel like in terms of creating a relationship this person has different ideas than i do right now in the long term this may not be something that is very satisfying but at at worst you can stand to learn something from that person or see it from their perspective okay so when judging things, you have to just look at it in the sense of like, okay, is this a healthy connection? How is this energy manifesting between us? Okay, and is it is this forcing me to grow or is it draining me? You know, things like that. And that's how you basically know. But oppositions are really cool because, like I said, they enable you to see what you yourself need to embody to uh, reach whole expression. So I give an example of let's say like like the axis of like Leo and Aquarius um, Leo Like let's say a person has Venus and Leo. They can be very much so devoted to their partner and 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 Romance and everything that that entails and seek to get inspiration and motivation from that partner but then they come across someone who has Venus in uh, Aquarius who is a lot more detached and rather than devoting full love to the partner they they devoted to a higher ideal or a group or something like that okay the Venus per the Venus and Leo person can stand to learn that okay everything doesn't revolve around me or you know I'm selling myself short by just being devoted to, to one person, I should embrace like a bigger kind of love. And the Aquarius person can learn how to be get more in tune with the things um, concerning uh, romance, you know, things like that, being affectionate and things like that, and really uh, tap into a certain layer of intimacy, you know. 
Uh, so, depending on the other aspects in the chart, and the, this is another thing to, to know. One aspect is never going to make or break the whole thing. There has to be, the whole chart has to be uh, taken into account, okay? But here are just some really good ones, like um, the moon and Venus, um, those are very important to our emotional well-being and our interaction with others. So it would be preferred if, you know, there were positive aspects from your Venus to the other person's uh, planets, particularly their their moon, you know, their Venus, their sun, uh, things of that nature. Uh, so like I said, keep, we want to keep into account the house, the aspects, as well as the signs. And not just the influence they're having on you, but the influence you are having on them. Okay? Um, and overall, this just helps us understand one another uh, a lot more. Okay? So, this is a little lesson here today on how to understand uh, synastry a little bit more. Like I said, if you haven't subscribed to my channel or checked out my channel, feel free to do so. Um, if you feel intrigued to... Uh, Hit me up, send me an email, I'll drop it down below. Um, until next time, peace.